look at the absolute dominance. Eight cubes, we beat death and leader. Yo, what's good, everybody? Today we are talking about an excellent early pool three deck that has a proven track record of getting people to infinite. There's only two cards from pool three that are absolute necessities, and that's gonna be Cerebro and Mystique. As long as you have those two cards, you're gonna have an absolutely incredible deck that could help you reach infinite as long as you are snapping and retreating at the right times. The rest of the deck is mostly pool one or pool two cards, and if there's any pool three cards in there, they're easily replaced by cards from earlier pools. So the goal of a Cerebro deck is to use all cards with the same amount of power so that on turn six, you're going to drop Cerebro, who's going to give your highest power cards plus two power. And you're going to drop Mystique, who's going to copy the Cerebro's ongoing ability and spread that out across the board. As long as all the cards are at the same exact power, they're all going to get a plus four boost the amount of power that gets added to the board on turn six is going to shock your opponents if they didn't realize that you were playing a cerebro deck and the best version of the cerebro deck at this current moment is cerebro 2 so we're going to use a bunch of two power cards that are going to get a plus four boost at the end from cerebro and mystique that means you're going to have a ton of low energy options so you're actually going to be playing a ton of cards out on the early turns and then and on turn five, the goal is to put out Blue Marvel, who's going to give all your cards plus one power. Blue Marvel gives your other cards plus one power. He does not give himself that plus one power. So all those two power cards are going to get raised up to three power. And then Cerebro and Mystique are going to give them an additional four power on the last turn, including Blue Marvel. Blue Marvel is a necessity for a Cerebro two deck, but the the good news is everybody already has them. Now the version of this deck that I've seen going around is this one down here. You'll notice that there are a couple of pool three cards and I will say that Brood and Goose are pretty damn close to necessities in this deck. I know I said you only really need two pool three cards for this deck and that is still true. You can still build an incredible Cerebro two deck without these cards. But the advantage that Goose brings is that nobody can play cards that cost four, five, or six at this location. Goose really locks out your opponent from playing their big cards later on in the game. Goose is actually an incredible control card. I think he's very undervalued in deck lists, especially when you're talking about low cost cards. The reason that Brood's so valuable to this deck is because he creates two additional copies of himself. It puts out three creatures on the board that can be buffed up by Cerebro and Mystique. You can still get the synergy done and win games without those two cards. You can replace Goose with another two power control card like Yandu, or even a number of pull three cards that you may have pulled as well, like Daredevil or Invisible Woman. Replacing Brood is a little harder, but honestly, you can just use any two power drop as long as they don't buff themselves or something like that. And the reason that we can get away with playing all these low power cards and then boosting them at the end is because we do have some control cards. We've got Storm, who's gonna to lock up a location early on for you and even if you're losing in power at that location with all the buffs that we're dropping on turn five and six you're still gonna have a really solid chance to win it we have the classic control combo of Iceman on turn one and scorpion on turn two and before we get to the three secret mvps of this deck i want to just talk about yellow jacket he is another pool three card he does afflict your other cards at this location with minus one power so you gotta play him out first but I just kind of have him in this deck as a zero cost card. He's not really great and he's easily replaceable. He almost feels like a placeholder because he's not a necessity in this deck. But like I said, we've got three cards that are not quite MVPs, but are kind of necessities in a Cerebro 2 deck. And the first one is Nightcrawler. He's basically going to be a movable seven power card if you get Blue Marvel, Cerebro, and Mystique off. Another amazing card for Cerebro is Mr. Sinister. Two cards at the same time for two energy that are both going to get massive buffs.
buffs. And the last card in the entire deck is Mr. Fantastic, and Mr. Fantastic is amazing. Because not only does he maintain that two power and then take on all the buffs of the other cards, but he actually spreads his power to the other two lanes without affecting the individual power of the cards, which allows the Cerebro combination to still go through. And if you're enjoying the content, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. So we're going to take you into some Cerebro 2 gameplay real quick. I know the video is kind of long, but I felt like it was important to really get into the nuances of how this deck works because there's so much going on. And of course, if you got Iceman turn one, you always want to set him off. Kind of hope that you screw up your opponent's plans. And because we have Storm in our hand, we're going to want to end a location really, really quickly. And likely that's going to be the third location because we don't really want to mess with the Zamet. Actually, we could. We could. But either way, I like to put Nightcrawler on a location that hasn't been revealed yet because we could always just move him out. Let's go ahead and just end Eternity Range right now. And then we have plans to Goose in another location. And there he goes with Debris. We don't necessarily mind that at all. And now we have Cerebro in hand, so obviously our plan is to save Cerebro for turn 6. I was considering just brooding into the flooded location, moving Nightcrawler out and brooding, but because he put a rock there, we're going to go ahead and goose Subterranea. He's got Wolfsbane. I don't think Goose would necessarily make a difference for him because it looks like he's playing a Patriot deck, so there's going to be a lot of low cards that he's playing. He snaps, and unfortunately, we did not draw Blue Marvel, and we don't have Mystique, but we do still have Cerebro. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to Brood on the left into Wakanda. And he has some sort of Kazar Zoo deck, so he does look like he might be at an advantage right now with the rocks. But we've got Mr. Fantastic, who's going to help us in both of those lanes, and we're going to drop Cerebro on the final turn. And Cerebro is going to give us a little bit of a swing. We're definitely winning that flooded location. It's all a matter of can we win Wakanda with Mr. Fantastic and Cerebro. Normally, the ideal play is, of course, Cerebro Mystique, but we'll have to see if this is good enough. Ooh. Of course, we got a lot of grunting with Kazar, but we got the job done. Even one Cerebro might swing a difference for us. All right, so we're going into our second game and we don't have Cerebro yet and we only have Blue Marvel, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead. We're going to Iceman him. Oh, he does the same to us, but we do have Nightcrawler still. Nightcrawler at two power, like uh, at two energy. I could live with that. There's Cerebro, and that looks nice. That's a good start. And we're going to drop Mr. Sinister into Danger Room because we don't really mind Mr. Sinister's, Mr. Sinister getting uh, killed by Danger Room, and he didn't, thankfully. But if he had, then his clone would have survived. <clears throat> um, so Scorpion, minusing the power from us, is very hurtful for our deck we're gonna brood the left side i would normally brood into danger room but the mr sinister survives so we got to kind of keep him and we give him a rock let him suffer we're gonna play mr fantastic right here into danger room and just hope that he survives and he does and he's got shuri and if you know me you know shuri is a dangerous card we love shuri over here on this channel i'm a big big shuri fan i got quite a few videos of her out there but we gotta believe in the cerebro deck come on blue marvel doing his thing and vision at 14 power is a tough one i'm not gonna lie there goes storm she gets set off and let's draw mystique give us mystique please Oh, Polaris hurts us. Polaris really hurts us. And we don't get Mystique. And that is extremely unfortunate. We are going to take the risk, play Goose 
into the danger room, hope that he survives, and go ahead and Cerebro right here. Cerebro could pull off the win for us. Let's see it happen. Goose survives. Cerebro. And not even leader is enough to defeat Cerebro. Let's go. So let's take us into one more game. And already we got Blue Marvel Mystique, which is wonderful. And Storm, that's going to be great. That is a fantastic start. Again, we're holding on to Yellow Jacket. We don't want to tip our hand too early. On reveal, effects do not happen at this location. And he snaps. All right. Uh, I feel like we're actually at the advantage here. I think we're at it like a huge advantage with nowhere, to be honest. But who knows? Who knows what kind of deck he's got? There goes Viper. I mean, I'm not particularly worried about that. Oh, oh, we were going to play our ongoing effects into nowhere. But now now i don't know because onslaught citadel exists uh we're gonna go ahead we're gonna yellow jacket strange academy right away and there we go sorry we're gonna storm strange academy right away i said yellow jacket i don't know what that means let's go ahead mr fantastic and nightcrawler we're feeling pretty solid about where we stand here i think Actually, we're going to snap. He already snapped. He might be a little worried now that we uh, flooded the location. And unfortunately, we don't have Cerebro yet. So maybe the snap is a little too soon. Maybe it's a little too, um, you know, maybe we feel a little too good about it. But all right, he killed the hood that he put up there. That was that was hurting us. We we're fine with that. And he killed the rocks that he put up there. Uh, I don't <laughs> I really don't know how to. I really don't know how to feel about that. I don't I don't think I particularly care. And there it is, folks. We got Cerebro and Mystique. We're going to Blue Marvel into nowhere. Just in case he does have some sort of Enchantress. I don't think this deck would run Enchantress. I think that would be kind of weird. But at the same time, he does have some things going on. We don't want them to kill all of our ongoing effects. Plus, Blue Marvel is going to power up nowhere. And we need more power in there because we don't have a ton of cards out right now. Got Demon and Death in the middle, and that puts us in an awkward position. I'm not so sure that we can get this done. Let's see. Cerebro is going to give plus four power. Uh, Mystique's going to give another plus four. That's going to be eight. Uh, six and 16 gives us the win at nowhere. But just in case, we're going to put Nightcrawler in there, too. And that's the beauty of Nightcrawler. You can move him around. You can do your thing. And uh, we are going Cerebro Mystique here. And he's leadering. Which gives a slight boost to death. But is it enough? I don't think so. And look at the absolute dominance, eight cubes. We beat death and leader. So that is our Cerebro 2 guide on how you can build an early pool three deck that has a chance to take it infinite if you properly snap and retreat. It has been one of my absolute favorite decks to play since I've gotten Mystique. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, it helps out a lot. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have yourself a wonderful rest of your day.